In this lecture, we're going to look at the concept of strong and weak acids and strong and weak bases. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to explain the difference between a strong and a weak acid, and you should be able to give examples of each. Similarly, you should be able to explain the difference between a strong and a weak base and give examples of each. Let's start by looking at the difference between strong and weak acids. Well, a strong acid is one in which all the molecules dissociate when dissolved in water. An example of this would be hydrochloric acid. So, when you put hydrochloric acid into water, it completely splits up into H plus and Cl minus ions. You have no molecules of HCl left whatsoever. Every single one will split up to be an H plus ion and a Cl minus ion. So if I had one mole of HCl molecules, I'll get one mole of hydrogen ions and one mole of chloride ions. Of course, confusingly, I've just used the H plus shortly after telling you that H plus ions don't actually exist in aqueous environments. It would technically be more correct to write this equation as HCl plus H2O goes to the hydronium ion H3O plus plus Cl minus ions. But throughout the course we'll continue to use both ways of representing uh, H plus ion that way and that way. You just have to be familiar with both methods. You would never be pulled up for writing H plus instead of H3O plus. Okay, so hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, as are many of the other common acids that you, you've used in the school lab throughout your career. For example, you know, nitric acid, sulfuric acid are also strong acids. So, Nitric acid completely splits up to give you H plus ions and nitrate ions. And sulfuric acid completely splits up to give you H plus ions and sulfate ions. Okay, so that's strong acids. What about weak acids? Well, a weak acid is one in which only some of the molecules dissociate. So only some of the molecules break up when you dissolve it in water. So the most common example that you've used has been ethanoic acid. So if we get ethanoic acid, and put it in water, Note I've used the uh, reversible arrows to show that it's an equilibrium. So this bond will break and for some of the molecules and you produce H plus ions and the thanamate ion. But not all the ethanoic acid molecules will dissociate. Uh, probably less than 1% of the molecules will actually break up to give you H plus ions. So if you have one mole of ethanoic acid molecules, you'll produce far, far, far less than one mole of H plus ions. Because most of the ethanoic acid molecules will remain as that molecule. Only a few of them will break up. So that's the main difference between a strong acid and a weak acid. Other weak acids which you should know include well, all carboxylic acids, so methanoic, ethanoic, propanoic, etc. They are all weak acids. Other ones are carbonic acid, which is what you get in soft drinks when you dissolve carbon dioxide in water. So carbonic acid is 
H2CO3 and some of those molecules break up with the H plus I and the bicarbonate. And the other one you should know is sulfurous acid, which is what you get when you dissolve sulfur dioxide in water. Um, sulfurous as opposed to sulfuric acid is H2SO3. And again, the reversible arrows showing you've got a weak acid that isn't going to totally dissociate. So that gives you H plus plus HSO3 minus. So, all carboxylic acids, carbonic acid and sulfurous acids, they're the ones you're expected to remember as being weak acids. Uh, if you're given an equation, you can tell whether or not it's a weak acid by whether or not you've got a reversible arrow or not. If you've got a reversible arrow, it's a weak acid. And just a word of warning, try not to confuse the terms strong and weak with the words concentrated and dilute. For example, if we had that 10 mole per litre solution of HCl, well, 10 moles per litre is concentrated and HCl is a strong acid. Whereas, if I had a 0.1 mole per litre solution of HCl, that's a dilute solution of a strong acid. Whereas, if I had 10 moles per litre of ethanoic acid, it's a concentrated solution, but of a weak acid. And similarly, if I had 0.1 moles per litre of ethanoic acid, that's a dilute solution of a weak acid. So, strong and weak mean totally different things from dilute and concentrated in terms of acids and bases. Okay, now I want to compare the properties of strong and weak acids. And I'll start off by showing a short demonstration of measuring the properties of several of several properties of a strong and weak acid. Okay, in this beaker I have got two moles per litre hydrochloric acid, a strong acid. Let's measure its pH. So it's get a nice deep red colour, so that's a pH of probably about one. And in this other beaker I've got the same concentration, 2 moles per litre, but of a weak acid, ethanoic acid. Let's measure its pH. So it's acidic, but it's a yellowy orange, probably about pH 3 or 4. Okay. Now I'm going to test the conductivity of both solutions. So I put it into the strong acid. We get a current of just over 2 point, or around about 2.2 .2 amps. I will now put it into the weak acid and get a very small current, 0 0.01 amps. And finally I'm going to test the reaction rates by putting a piece of magnesium into each one. So you can see the two mole per litre hydrochloric acid, the strong acid, is reacting far faster than the weak acid. They're both reacting you can see from the bubbles of gas being produced but the hydrochloric acid is finished already and the ethanoic acid is still continuing. Okay. So as you saw from that demonstration we had equimolar solutions of a strong acid HCl and a weak acid CH3COOH Strong acid, of course, completely dissociates. You have lots of H plus ions and some chloride ions. Whereas the weak acid 
only partially dissociates, giving just a few H plus ions and a few ethanoate ions. And this difference in concentration of the H plus ions results in different properties of the uh, strong and weak acids. So, the strong acid would have a comparatively high concentration of H plus ions and weak acid a low concentration of H plus ions even though they were both two mole per litre solutions. Hence the strong acid had a lower pH and weak acid had the higher pH near a 7. Conductivity of the strong acid was high because there was lots of ions in the solution to conduct electricity. Whereas the weak acid conducted electricity because there was ions in the solution, but conductivity was comparatively low. And the reaction rate, well, because of the high concentration of hydrogen ions, the reaction rate was high or fast. Whereas the weak acid, the reaction rate was so. Interesting, however, and this is one thing I didn't demonstrate, was if we carried out a titration, we'd have found that we required the same volume of sodium hydroxide to neutralise both solutions. And that seems slightly surprising, so let's look at that in a wee bit more detail. Okay, so, as I said, the amount of alkali you needed to neutralise the acids is the same. So to explain that, let's look at what's happening with the weak acid. As we add the hydroxide ions with the alkali, the OH- ions react with the H plus ions of the ethanoic acid to form water. So the H plus ions are being removed. And if you remember the equilibrium we did in higher, the Chatelier's principle, if we remove the H plus ions, more of the ethanoic acid molecules will dissociate to replace those H plus ions. We then need to add more OH- ions to remove those H plus ions. So more of these dissociate. So eventually, all these ethanoic acid molecules will dissociate. So uh, producing the same number of H plus ions as a similar concentration of HCl would, because we keep on removing those H plus ions from solution. So an explanation would be that neutralization removes the H plus ions from the solution and so equilibrium shifts to the right in favour of more dissociation until eventually all the ethanoic acid molecules get dissociated. So the same volume of alkali is required to neutralise a weak acid and a strong acid. So moving on now to strong and weak bases. Well, it's very similar to the strong and weak acids. So strong bases dissociate completely. Example would be sodium hydroxide. So not, not a reversible arrow. So that completely dissociates to give you sodium ions and hydroxide ions. And most of the hydroxides we come across are strong alkalis. Potassium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide. There's only one weak base you're expected to know at the moment. And the only weak, weak, well, what weak bases do is they only partially dissociate. And the only one that you're expected to recognise at the moment is ammonia, NH3. So the NH3, if you bubble it through water, you produce some ammonium ions and some hydroxide ions. But lots of the NH3 won't dissociate. So 
we get a far lower concentration of hydroxide ions than we do with the strong alkali. And naturally, in a similar way, that affects the properties of strong weak bases. So a strong base would have a high concentration of hydroxide ions and a weak base, a low concentration, assuming they are equimolar. pH of the strong base would be high. pH of the weak base would be lower, near 7. Conductivity of the strong base would be high because there will be lots of ions in the solution. Conductivity of the weak base would be lower. And the reaction rate of the strong base would be fast compared to the weak base, which would be slower. But just like the case of the acids, the same amount of acid is required to neutralize both strong and weak bases for the same reasons that uh, if you remove the OH- ions from the weak base then further dissociation happens until all the weak base molecules are dissociated. So you should be able to explain the difference between strong and weak acids and you should be able to give examples of each. Examples of strong acids are things like hydrochloric, nitric, sulfuric, where weak acids are things like carboxylic acids, carbonic acid and sulfurous acid. You should also be able to explain the difference between strong and weak bases and give examples of them. Strong acids are things like potassium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide. The only weak base you know is ammonia.